This is Math 142, Section 7.1. This is Part 2 of the lecture. And we have all these trig identities that we that we talked about last time. And we were using them before uh, in Part 1 just to do some simplification. And now what I want to do is some what, what we call verification. We, I want to verify an identity. If you think about that word identity, that basically means things that are equal to each other. They have the same identity. Like secant of x is an identity to 1 over cosine of x. They're, they're equivalent to each other. So the nice thing about identities, I think it's the nice thing, it also might be the, the horrible thing about them, is they actually tell you where they want you to get to. Uh, cosine of theta times that quantity secant theta minus cosine theta equals sine squared theta. What, um, what we asked to do is to verify not simplify, but verify that this is an identity, that this thing actually does equal that. And so, um, just like last time, there's some rules of, of thumb uh, here. Like, this is, these are not hard and fast rules, uh, but they're just things that we could take advantage of. One of them is pick a side and stick with it. Now, sometimes, um, you know, you could do things to both sides that'll be more efficient, and that's okay to do, but just kind of... Again, rule of thumb, pick a side and stick with it. And I'm going to throw this up. This was from our simplify thing from last time. But sometimes you want to put everything in terms of sine and cosine too. Again, not always, but sometimes that's the thing to do. And you don't always see the path on this problem when you start off. You just start to go and see, see where it gets to. Um, so let's go ahead and deal with that. So if I look at this... This is already in terms of cosine, cosine of theta. Secant is 1 over cosine. And cosine is cosine. And I'm going to try to keep on manipulating this to get it to be uh, sine squared. And just like verify from last time, um, do the arithmetic. So for example, this is this multiplied by that. So let me distribute that cosine into there. Cosine theta times 1 over cosine theta is 1. Cosine theta times cosine theta, that's cosine squared theta. And then, if you'll notice, um, if I look at this Pythagorean identity, if I subtract that cosine squared from both sides, 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared. So this does equal sine squared. And notice I got there from that Pythagorean identity. Now what we did is we worked on the left-hand side to make it equal to the right-hand side. I I mean, I guess you could try and break that up and make it into that. That would be that would be a bit of work. You can kind of trace it back this way and make make sense of it, but that's going to be a lot more work, uh, like a lot more clever things. Like to think from here, I'll go, oh, I'll factor out a cosine from here to get it to here. That's that's that would be pretty strategic to go that direction. So we picked the left hand side and went. The reason I bring up this left hand side, right hand side is in your text. Um, uh, particularly in the solutions manual, if you have that, they talk about left hand side and right hand side. So if you see LHS, RHS, that's just telling you, you know, which which side they did. Now in this one, I am I'm going to pick the left hand side. You you can pick either side. You know, you, if I was doing this side, I would rewrite them in terms of sine and cosine and try and add the, those fractions together and see if I got that. And I, I probably will. I'm gonna just going to pick the left hand side and do it because I want to show a really specific technique here. So I have this one minus sine of u. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by its conjugate. So that is just kind of a, uh, I'll call it a tool uh, that we have. So conjugates are in the form, like if I have a plus b, a minus b is its conjugate. You can think about complex numbers, that sort of thing. But in this case, I have one minus sine. So I'm going to multiply by one plus sine. And when I say multiply by one plus sine, what I'm really multiplying by is one, right? One plus sine u over one plus sine u. I'm just multiplying by that version of it. And here is how it helps me. Up top here, I'm, I think I'll just leave this right now as cosine of u times 1 plus sine u. I'm not going to multiply that part out just yet. But if I multiply these together, I have a difference of squares situation. Like this times this 
it's going to end up being 1 minus sine squared u. And I'll hash that out over here in case you don't see it. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative sine times 1 is negative sine u. 1 times sine u is sine u. Notice those add to a 0. Negative sine times positive sine is positive sine u. Oh no, negative times positive is negative sine u. So I get this. Now here's what is lovely about that. 1 minus sine squared. I have that 1 and that sine squared that pushes me towards a Pythagorean. And if I subtract sine squared from both sides here, cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. So that's just a cosine squared. This would then be the same as cosine of u times 1 plus sine u over cosine squared. And I can do a little bit of reducing then. Cosine u divided by one of those cosines gives me 1 plus sine u over cosine u. And I am so close at this point. These two things, the 1 and the sine, are both being divided by that cosine. So I'm going to split that out into a fraction 1 over cosine u plus sine u over cosine u. And you can see how I'm one step away. 1 over cosine is secant. Sine over cosine is tangent. And I've verified that identity. Now notice I picked the left-hand side. Like I said, you could have picked the right-hand side. And I'm not going to do the whole thing. But if you had, the first step would be secant is 1 over cosine u. Tangent is sine u over cosine u and then I would add them together and here's what I would do notice I'm just kind of going backwards here but what I would do here with this 1 plus sine u after I add these together is I would again multiply by that conjugate if you ever get to a point where you're, you're stuck and you have a 1 plus sine or a 1 plus cosine or a 1 minus cosine multiply by the conjugate because it gives you something that you can use in a Pythagorean theorem uh, setting For this next one, I have uh, this, 2 tangent x secant x equals this. And I'm, again, verifying. everything. Every problem in here is verify. So a couple things I could do. I could start to split this out on this left-hand side, although I'm not sure what I would do. I guess I would multiply together once I turn these into fractions. The right-hand side really appeals to me because I see that there are some, some fractions that I want to subtract. And that just kind of pushes me in a direction. There, there's some arithmetic for me to do here. So first I'm going to need a common denominator. And it would be 1 minus sine times 1 plus sine. So this one needs to get multiplied by 1 minus sine over 1 minus sine. And this one would need to get multiplied by 1 plus sine over 1 plus sine. And see what I'm doing is I'm making it so there's a common denominator which is 1 minus sine times 1 plus sine. 1 minus sine times 1 plus sine. So I'm going to do that multiplication. 1 times that is just itself. And we just did this multiplication. 1 plus sine times 1 minus sine. That's going to be 1 minus sine squared. 1 times 1 minus sine. So now I have a couple of pieces here. I know I have a common denominator, so I can just subtract that numerator. Now, be super careful because it's it's 1 plus sine x, but it's minus 1 minus sine x. That, that negative is applying to everything that's in that uh, numerator. And then the denominator, 1 minus sine squared, points me towards Pythagorean. If I subtract sine squared from both sides, cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. So this is cosine squared. So I'll keep going from here. If I distribute that negative into here, that makes the 1 negative and the sine positive. So 1 minus 1 is 0. Sine plus sine is 2 sine. Two of them. 
one of them plus one of them. And that's over cosine squared. So I'm seeing some pieces here. I feel like I'm close. I've got my two. And if I think about this, I could think about this as sine x over cosine x times one over cosine x. Oh, that is so clever. I love it. Look at that. Um, I could split this out like this. Sine over cosine is tangent. One over cosine is secant. And we verified the identity. Take a look at this one. It's, uh, it's kind of hard to decide which side to pick first. So um, sometimes you might work on this side for a while, get it to a certain point, and then work on this side for a while and get it to the same point. That could happen in this problem. Um, I think that I'll just start, I'm going to start with the right hand side. So let's see what I can do with, what I can do with this. I see a tangent squared and I see a secant. Now you might, you might turn this into sine and cosine right away and go from there. That'll get you there. I'm just going to pick a different way because I, I like this, that I have this tangent and tangent squared. And I notice if I subtract one from both sides, that's the same as tangent squared is the same as secant squared minus one. So this right hand side, I'm going to, I'm going to rewrite this tangent squared as secant squared theta minus one. And now this is a super clever little move. Secant squared minus one, I could factor that. You know, if I had x squared minus one, that's difference of squares, x plus one times x minus one. So I could do something similar with this. I have secant squared, so I could factor that into secant plus one times secant minus one. I'm going to put that over secant minus 1. And now I can do some reducing. I, I see that secant theta minus 1 divided by secant theta minus 1 is 1. So that leaves me just with then secant of theta plus 1. All right, let's dig into that. Keep trying getting it to there. So this, would, this might be a case where, like, if I'm here and I'm not sure what to do, I might pick away the left-hand side and see if I could turn it into secant theta plus one. It's okay to work on both sides. Again, this is not a hard, fast rule. It's just a recommendation. But let me keep going. Secant is one over cosine. And now I did that because I'm going to try and add these together. So one over cosine, cosine is my denominator here. So if I need a common denominator, I can multiply that one by cosine theta over cosine theta. And that gives me one plus cosine plus cosine over cosine. Those are all to theta. And I have a common denominator. If I add these together, I get one plus cosine over cosine. Now this example that I just showed you, I had this nice clean line that just went from here to here. That will not happen with these problems all the time. You're going to hit dead ends. You're going to have to back up and try something again. This is investigating this space and the relationships in here. Taking a look at this next one, I have this cosine of a negative and sine of a negative. So I know that, that cosine of a negative is the same as cosine of the, the positive version of that x, or I should say the opposite of that. So this is the same as cosine x. Sine of a negative is the same as negative sine of the opposite. So a negative sine of the opposite. And I'm there. One step and I'm there. I just had to run it through these. Now this next one, I have got tangent squared, secant squared. I've got stuff all over the place. There's a lot of ways to approach this. I noticed that with the tangent squared, I've got the cotangent squared. See, I have, have cotangent and cosecant on, squared on, on opposite sides, tangent squared and secant squared on opposite sides. So it feels like I should be able to maybe move this over here and move that over there. And I, I sure could do that. And I, would, I could get to an answer from there. I think what I'm going to do, though, is just do a little substitution. So let me look at this. Secant squared. I know that secant squared is 1 plus tangent squared. So I'm going to replace this with a 1 plus tangent squared minus 
cosecant squared is cotangent squared plus 1. And now I'm subtracting that whole thing. So this would be 1 plus tangent squared. That, that negative gets distributed in there. Minus cotangent squared. I forgot my x there. Plus, oh, not plus 1. The negative is getting distributed to it. Minus 1. If I gather up some like terms, 1 minus 1 is 0, leaves me with tangent minus cotangent squared, or tangent squared minus cotangent squared, which is that. So as you're doing these homework problems, let yourself hit dead ends. Let yourself have to go back and, and retry stuff. Really, this practice is getting it, knowing these relationships really well, and just being able to manipulate these uh, in terms of each other. Post questions in the forum, message me with questions.